Zach Morris is trash. Zach is feeling great. Driver's Ed starts today, which is the first step in his plan to drive girls far away, park, and demand a hand job for a ride home. Zach begins his campaign for parked car hostage sex by giving Kelly a ring. She says they just started dating and she's not ready to be his girlfriend. Zach has no respect for her well-defined boundaries and says, relax, it's a friendship ring. Kelly asks if there's anything she can do for her friend. Zach suggests sexual favors. Mr. Tuttle says a car is a responsibility and a privilege, two concepts Zach has no time for. Mr. Tuttle pop quizzes on the correct driving hand position. Zach says, one hand on the wheel, the other groping your passenger. Slater answers correctly, hands at 10 and 2, so you have control of your car. Zach makes fun of his ability to drive safely without assaulting anyone. Kelly says Zach needs to take driver's ed seriously. He ignores her and displays the cheap ring he bought so every guy can see he owns her. Zach wants to know why his friends are sad, mistaking homework for depression. They say they don't have money for cars. Zach says he'll be driving his dad's Porsche when he turns 16, a very sad thing to lie about. Slater says he just bought a car. Zach says if he didn't buy that ring, he could have bought a car. Another bummer of a lie. Slater shows the gang his car and says it needs a little work. Zach jumps for joy because work and misfortune are synonymous to him. Then says even the doctors who worked on Michael Jackson couldn't fix this car. A bad joke that makes no sense for a variety of reasons. The gang minus Zach chips in and the car looks great. Zach, who sees the world like an infant, says he won't be 16 for months. So who cares because nobody can drive until then. Slater says he turns 16 next week. Zach decides to be the only teenager in history to actively prevent a friend with a car from getting their license. Zach says he's ready to take class seriously, unlike some people, cough, cough, Slater. Tuttle says Slater's his best student, and Zach says that's the thing. He's so good, he's been telling people he should teach the class. Now Zach has a paranoid teacher squashing a student's passion to learn, with the goal of depriving his friends and himself of happiness. Mr. Tuttle gives Slater a challenge, and he nails it. And Zach envisions a nightmare where Kelly and Slater are happily dating. But they're still discussing Zach, because this child can't picture a reality where he's not the center of attention and six feet away at all times. Zack offers Slater 20 bucks for a private lesson, then tells Screech to impersonate Mr. Tuttle and request Belding get the keys he left in the driver's ed car after Screech stalls for exactly five minutes. Zack goes to steal a car and leaves his friend alone on a bathroom floor to commit countdown timer identity theft. Zack spastically pulls the stolen car around. Slater says they could get in big trouble driving in the halls. Zack says his $20 deserves a hallway lesson. And he could learn better if Slater was driving and he was outside the car entirely. The best way to learn how to drive a car. Kelly's on her way to practice. Slater graciously offers a ride. Zack commands his woman to get back. Zack, fearful Kelly will get caught in this hot ride, thereby delaying his parked car tugger, screams at the top of his lungs. Slater, distracted by Zack's shrill outburst, crashes the car into lockers. Zack ignores Kelly's head wound and berates Slater. Then, hearing Belding coming on cue, flees the scene of the accident he orchestrated. Mr. Belding announces whoever's responsible has until tomorrow to fess up. Kelly blames herself because she accepted a ride knowing Zack's a jealous bitch. And Zack got jealous like a bitch, then cried like a bitch, and that's why they crashed. Zack is ready to apologize, but Kelly, who just suffered head trauma, says it wasn't his fault. That's all Zack needs to hear to feel he's off the hook. Zack tells Slater he's fully to blame because he was driving. Zack says if he was at fault, he'd be man enough to turn himself in. Because the saddest lies are the ones we tell ourselves. Slater wonders how Belding was right there. Screech blabs he was on the phone because Zack was keeping him on the phone after planting info that the driver's ed keys were left unattended. They decide to teach Zack a lesson before he attempts more vehicular manslaughter. Zack wants to know where his woman is. They say Kelly went home because her head hurt. Zack, not a doctor, says she's fine. Kelly pretends like she doesn't remember Zack and finally gets to remove that tacky ring. But when Kelly says she remembers Slater is her boyfriend, that's too far and Zack confesses, unwilling to give up a brain damaged human he understands to be his property. Mr. Belding comes to class for a confession. Zack says it's fine because Belding will say if nobody confessed, he's disappointed but can't get anyone in trouble. Only that doesn't happen because that's not how trouble works. Belding says everyone is now flunking and they'll have to repeat driver's ed next year. Kelly, angel that she is, says it isn't fair for everyone to suffer and she'll take the heat. Slater, a gentleman, says he drove the car, so he'll take the rap. And with Belding almost out the door, Zack says it was his fault and he set Slater up to get caught in a stolen car. But only comes clean because it was his last shot of maybe, eventually, securing that parked car handy. Let's review. Zack Morris used jewelry to pressure a girl into a relationship she didn't want. Ignored vital lessons about driving safely. And when the first person in his group of friends was about to get their license, planted seeds of mistrust with his instructor, then used payoffs, lies, and identity theft to manipulate him into driving stolen school property with the intent to get him busted, then distracted him while he was operating a moving vehicle causing an accident that resulted in a head injury, and only confessed after his wounded girlfriend pretended to have the kind of brain damage that would negate their spurious union, then let two victims take the blame for their accident he caused and only accepted defeat as a last ditch effort to get the theoretical car sex he felt entitled to. Zach Morris is trash. Zach Morris is trash.